Hello there, the internet, and especially hello to my fellow Max NC Millers out there. I'm going to show you how to go from breaking off your end mills to doing this. I'm going to do step by step. You're only going to have to do some sketchy stuff once or twice, I promise, and then you're going to be able to cut like a pro. Well, more like a mediocre hobbyist enthusiast. But I guarantee, stick around, because you're going to be entertained. You might laugh, but for sure you'll be annoyed. Here we go. Alright, so I'm going to go to the other end of the garage and I'm going to just start randomly throwing things at the keyboard until it goes on its own. Hello there, the internet. Welcome back to my garage. I thought I'd take you through today uh, the process I'm kind of in development of, of uh, how to set up these the speeds and feeds for my mill, uh, especially when it's a new bit in, a, in, an, uh, in an old material, but a new bit. Nonetheless, so this is a 1 8 inch high speed steel uh, two flute end mill. It is uh, so we're gonna do we're gonna start off by doing uh, side cutting. We're gonna do 1 8 inch uh, depth of cut. We'll start taking passes at say five thousandths width of cut, and then uh, if it goes well, we'll go up to ten thou, uh, and we'll kind of play it by ear and listen to the motor, listen to the chatter of the machine, and we'll see if we can break this bit. So I'm just gonna jog around here. Yeah, we're going to jog around. I'm just turning this on so I can get an idea of what it touches. I'm not being super precise here. Just using the, the jog commands. So we're going to set up our Z first. And now we're going to jog down by 10,000 increments until we touch. Alright, we're just about there. Now we'll go in 1,000 increments. Oh, there we go, we touched. Back up. Oh, I didn't have button jog mode on. That's why. Sorry, I had it I didn't have it in incremental jog mode for that Z. There we go, we're in more contact. Go up one. Until it says 125. There we go. That's 124.7. Now we'll jog over. I know this isn't all that exciting, but it is what it is. Alright, there we go. And now we'll just jog back and forth. This is at 20 inches per minute. Alright, well, it'd help if I put the RPM up, wouldn't it? So 125 thou depth of cut, and we'll go over say 10 thousandths right now. Here we go. All right, so 10 thousandths depth of cut, no problem whatsoever. So let's go 15 thousandths depth of cut. Here we go. 125 thou depth of cut, 15 thou width of cut. No problem whatsoever, let's go 20 thousandths width of cut. No problem there, let's live dangerously, let's do 30 thou depth of cut. Ready, go! Okay, that was, that was pretty good. 30 thou, not a problem. Let's see. Question is, do we do a little bit more? Because that's about perfect. I mean, we had, we had almost nothing left over, so deflection wasn't an issue. We'll go 5 thou more. Let's do 35 thou with the cut. I, I think this is going to be the end of her. Oh, not a problem. I am, I am pleasantly surprised. All right, although 
It looks like we were getting a little peel back here. Like it wasn't actually cutting, it was tearing. Hmm. I, I kind of like 30 thou. But you know what? Because, because I love you guys, we're going to go 40 thou. 40 thou. Width of cut. The same as the, if this is anything like the uh, quarter inch two fluid end mill, this should get interesting. Oh, good lord. I mean, really, I am ner I'm a little nervous. Look at how much of that's going to get buried into that workpiece. <laughs> I really think this is going to break the cutter. I really do. Alright, here goes. Uh, where's my... I'm going to go get my chicken shoe. Alright, so I'm going to go to the other end of the garage and I'm going to just start randomly throwing things at the keyboard until it goes on its own. I can't believe that worked. That's amazing. So, I mean, that's kind of amazing in its own way. Huh. Who would have who would have thought that would have actually done forty thou on a one eighth inch end mill? So this is the wall we were cutting on here, and there's the surface finish. Not the best, but neither was I expecting it really to be the best because. My 4100 RPM here is not nearly um, fast enough to get the correct surface feet per minute. It's about ideal for steel, but um, not for aluminum. We've got to go faster in aluminum. So I bet if you, got, you put this on the high setting and did what I just did, you'd probably get a much better surface finish on that wall. So now we're going to go down to G-Wizard on the computer and finish this up. All right, so our stick out is... 5 eighths of an inch, 625. This is the uh, suggested chip load, one thou, roughly a tooth, and we need to do 600 surface feet per minute uh, for speed. Our cut depth will enter the value we had, which was we said it was an eighth of an inch or one diameter. And our cut max cut width was 40 thousandths of an inch. So it says we had 32% radial engagement. Not that that really matters. I mean, come on. Does that matter to you, to me? No, but maybe to someone who actually knows what they're doing. My machine's max RPM right now is 4,100 RPM. I can't go any faster than that until I get new pulleys, which stand by for this weekend because we're going to have a sweet video on that, I think. It's going to be pretty awesome. Well, I'll, I think it's going to be awesome. According to this, we should have been getting a one and a half thou of deflection. And according to this, only 4.72 ounce inches of torque were required. So this is well within the realm of a uh, of your typical one fifth horsepower um, max NC motor, because I I was able to run mine before it gave up the ghost at seven ounce inches, um, pretty easily. So if you're out there and you have yourself a decent high speed steel two flute cutter, you should be able to get go up to a deflection value of one point five thou uh, of an inch, not millimeter. And as long as your torque is under 7 ounce inches, I'm not sure what it would be in uh, metric. I guess I can go ahead and do the calculation, and boom, this is what it's going to be. Because what I do for my viewers knows no bounds of math. All right, Josh, you, you've told me it works. What's the point of doing all this? Well, here's the point. Let's say that yours doesn't do 4,100 RPM at that amount of torque. Let's say yours is 6,800. Okay. Uh, you're going to go ahead and say, all right, I want, I still want that. Uh, let's unlock. If you click the little lock sign here, it unlocks the value, and it gives you what it thinks it should be. Now, this is just a suggestion. So at 6,800 RPM and 4, 000, or 40 thousandths width, width of cut, it's saying that we're going to take a little less than a thousandth of an inch chip, which is quite a, which is pretty close to this value, which is what we want and is what most manufacturers recommend. So you can run it at 6,800 RPM at 12 inches per minute, and it will have half the deflection and almost no torque. So we have one or two options. We can speed up this by, if we enter in 20, like because that my machine likes to run at 20, and it seems to do it pretty accurately. So we could do that, 
and we notice that deflection is still less than it was before, and we're still cutting at the same width, and we're cutting at the same feed rate, and we're taking a pretty decent chip right there. So let's go back to the 4100 that my machine did it at. We know that it does it well, or did it okay. I, I really, I think I prefer the 35 or the 30 thou width of cut. Uh, it just seemed cleaner and maybe a little more sustainable. So we can put that value in and say, well, we didn't, we could, we can do 40 thou, but we didn't quite like how it looked. You know, it didn't give us good finish or what have you. So now, all right, we're still, our deflection, it's less, obviously, and our feed rate's 20, 4100. All right, let's say we could run it at 25. All right, now we're probably pretty close to what we were before. Uh, but here's, here's the cool part, right? This is the reason that we, that we've even, that we've downloaded this and all the rest. It's the futzing of these values. So we have 6,800 RPM. It's our surface feet per minute. That's what we need to get up. And that appears to be controlled almost exclusively by RPM and the diameter of the tool. So I don't know if we're ever going to get up to what we need to be at. Uh, we need to be at 600 surface feet per minute to get a good, good finish. We're getting a good tooth load, so if you had a 10,000 RPM motor, you could run at 20 uh, inches per minute, just fine. Deflection's just fine, because we know it can handle up to a thou. And if, if you're feeling uh, skippy, what you do is you go up here and you click on this Optimize tool. And you go here and you say, what's my max deflection? I said it was 0, 1. All right, you hit Enter, and you make sure that before you hit Enter that this is Optimize Width, lock the depth of cut. Save. All right, so it's now saying that we can take, holy, all right, I don't know about that. <laughs> well, it says that we should be able to take 80, well, 84 thousandths depth of cut at 10,000 RPM at a 16.8 inch per minute feed rate, and we would have pretty close to the same deflection we had at the 40 inches per minute. But let's say we weren't comfortable with that. Let's enter what I feel comfortable with. And we come down here, all right, so it gets as close as it can, and it readjusts everything. Now, I know from our test that that's too slow, and that's all based on deflection. And deflection, you know, is based on RPM and blah, 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 blah. All right. You've done this, Josh. What, how else is this useful to me? Here is the beautiful part of this. Now that you know what you feel comfortable with deflection, so we'll go back. And at 20 inches per minute, what I, what I, my empirical evidence said I could do, and at 30 thou depth of cut, I felt comfortable at 30 thou. I know that it has 1.2 deflection. So what we'll say is that we want 1 thou of deflection. And that, this is probably why I was taking way too much. Holy cow, look at how much I was taking. That's, that's kind of impressive it did that. <laughs> so. What we can do now is this, and this is the cool part. Depth of cut, we want this. We want to know what this is. So let's say that we did a full width of cut. This would be if you were profiling, right? Like if you're doing your typical, I have a big chunk of aluminum and I want to cut out like a rabbit shape out of it. And I don't want to use a bandsaw to get it close and then come from the outside. Like, like you essentially want a slot. So you say, I want my cut width to be the entire diameter right so the entire bit is in the work you come over here you click on this icon and you say i want one thou max deflection and over here you see now that it says optimize depth and lock width of cut but let's say that we didn't want that one thou it was a little too aggressive for us so we say let's go eight tenths and we'll save it so at this point it's saying that i can take a cut depth of 179, so 17, well, almost 18 thousandths of an inch of cut depth in a profile at 20 inches per minute at 41 RPM. And I'll get a little less deflection than I got in the past. And my adjusted, it's still too high, really. It's still a bit too high, but you know, we've seen that the tool that I have is capable of doing this uh, when it's choked up like that. But here's the thing, right? If you're only going down a quarter of an inch, then 
there's no reason to have this much stick out, right? If if you have a, a very short, so it all depends on what you're doing. If you have a very short uh, depth of cut, and you want to run that profile, then just if it's only two, if it's only a quarter of an inch deep, then go to 375. That still gives you plenty of room. And you see now that our deflection went way down. So if we go over here, click this again, and say that we want eight thousandths again, save, you can now see that we can go, what, almost six times, five times deeper, just by choking up that little bit. We choked up three-eighths of an inch, and all of a sudden we can go way deeper, right? So choke up on your tool. If you take nothing else away from this, from all this cool stuff, choke up on your tool. That is what you need to do. For your typical Max and Sear, they're 6,800 inches per minute. Um, we'll unlock this, let the bunny rabbit do its thing. It's saying we should do, at 6,800 RPM, we should do 15 inches per minute. And if we have 3 eighths stick out, we should be able to do a full width of cut or a profile cut, right? You're doing the outside of your shape of your your gasket, your clamp, whatever. So you and you can go almost 80 thou depth of cut and you're still taking a good chip. Your deflection is way down and the torque value is way down. So go ahead and give this a shot, right? But remember, it is all dependent on this. So let's say that you have your typical 1/8 inch end mill and it's a full inch out. Look what happens down here to deflection. We just went through the roof. We just broke our tool clean off, right? That matters. I can't, I can't express to you how much it matters uh, the stick out. Even just going, if you can do a half inch, you know, and make sure the tool is supported. You know, it can't be like my 3 8 shank to 1 8 inch end mill because it's not going to support uh, the cutting edge. It's still going to be 5 eighths away no matter what I do. Um, so, yeah, what we see is it's, it now it's manageable. We can still do this. This is still a reasonable thing. This is a reasonable cut. And uh, but I mean, no matter what we do with a one inch in, one eighth inch end mill, unless we're running this thing at like let's try twenty thousand ripums. So this is like a this would be your typical Chinese offshore, um, you know, thirty forty. I think they run around twenty thousand RPMs. Or uh, this would be a router, essentially. Um, it's saying that we would need to run at 44 inches per minute, 20,000 RPM, and we would get the surface feet per minute that we want, and we get a good, uh, our deflection is reasonable, our cut width is still the same, and our depth of cut is still the same. This doesn't take into account your machine being stiff enough to take this, right? Your, your machine still has to be stiff enough that this deflection won't cause issues, because it might, you might match your harmonic frequency and get a bunch of chatter. With this kind of calculator, you can easily adjust. Uh, if you get a new motor, you get a new bit, new size of bit, new diameter. You need a new material. Uh, knowing what your what you can your machine can handle deflection wise and torque wise. You know, if your motor stalls out at a certain uh, feed, speed, depth of cut, width of cut, enter that value into this. See what what it says torque wise. See what it says deflection wise, and then adjust. Right, so that's it's really that easy. It's just a it's kind of an iterative process, but you're using empirical data, data that you get by doing experiments, entering it into this calculator, using these results right here, putting it back in to to adjust all of these settings. Use these settings to program your G code, and you're gonna be golden, right? Golden. All right, so that'll work pretty. I wouldn't, I'm not sure if, how comfortable I would feel saying you can go smaller than this and it'll be accurate. But once again, if you get yourself a, a 1 16th diameter end mill, do, do your tests. Do what I did. And enter the values. Use the results down here. Modify the values for material, RPM, feed rate, and get comfortable with it. Try it again. And, uh, you know, you, you break a bit. It's not the end of the world. You can do it. You're going to get this. Honestly, you're going to get it. All right. Take care. Bye.